prayer, please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning, Senators. It's so good to see all of you again. And uh, in this office, in the time when you've been in your districts, uh, you have still been in our prayers. Prayer from Psalm 46. I begin with this. God, you are our refuge and strength. You are an ever-present help in the time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. God, you say to us, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. And Lord, we honor you, for the Lord Almighty is with us, and you are our fortress, our place of safety. So I declare in this place today over you senators, I speak this blessing. I pray that in the days and weeks and months ahead when you face difficulty, that you, God, would give each one confidence. I pray that in the time of conflict, that you would know the calmness of heart. I pray that in those times when there are differences, and we know there will be, that you would face them with an honor for one another. I pray in the moments ahead when there is division, that God would give you a high perspective so that you know that you are pursuing a common mission. And I pray that in the moments when you are opposed, that God would give you strength of character and give you the ability to bless those who oppose you. I pray that in the moments that you are winning, that you will embrace humility. And in the moments when you would lose, that you would be filled with grace. And I pray that in the moments when you're brokenhearted, that you'd receive healing. In the moments when you hurt, that you'd be made whole. And I pray that your deep conviction that you all have would be infused with a deeper compassion. And when this happens, may there be a demonstration to our state of what servant-hearted government looks like. So, Lord, I pray that you bless our governor, our Supreme Court justices, our representatives. Bless our staff and assistants, all who are helping us with government. And, Lord, pray, I just pray that you pour out your blessing upon these senators and fill this place with peace. God bless our great state that we all love and serve, Minnesota. Amen. Secretary will take the roll. Senators Abler, Anderson, Bach, Benson, Bigham, Carlson, Chamberlain, Champion, Clausen, Coleman, Swazinski, Dames, Dibble, Dornick, Dreheim, Duckworth, Dietzik, Eaton, Eichhorn, Eakin, Fate, Franz, Gazelka, Goggin, Herr, Hoffman, Housley, Howe, Ingerbritson, Isaacson, Jasinski, Johnson, Johnson, Stewart, Kent, Kifmar, Klein, Coran, Kunish, Lang, Latz, Limmer, Lopez, Friends, and Marty, Matthews, McEwen, Miller, Murphy, Nelson, Newman, Newton, Osmick, Pappas, Port, Pratt, Putnam, Rarick, Rest, Rosen, Rood, Senjum, Tomasoni, Torres, Ray, Utke, Weber, Westrom, Weger, Wickland. Pursuant to Rule 14.1, the following members intend to vote under Rule 40.7. Senators Carlson, Dibble, Dietzik, Eaton, Eakin, Kent, Latz, Newton, Port, Putnam, Thomasoni, Torres, Way, Torres, Ray, and Wickland. A quorum is president. We will begin with the second order of business, executive and official communications. The following communications were received and referred as indicated. Please make note, no action is taken. The following communications also were received. Also, no action is required. starting on page six. We move to the eighth order of business, introduction of first bills, of, of, of first reading of uh, Senate bills, 
The bills in today's introduction calendar are given their first reading and referred to as indicated with the exception on page 1, Senate File 2684. It will be referred to Health and Human Services, Finance and Policy. And on page 5, Senate File 2722 will be referred to Transportation and Finance Policy. Move to the eighth order, I'm sorry, ninth order of business. <clears throat> we will adopt the author motions under motions and resolutions in one motion. All in favor of the author's motion signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, motion carries. <laughs> Senator Senjum. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, uh, pardon me, Mr. President. Good grief. I'm going back to Senator Pappas. Where's she? Anyway. <laughs> uh, Mr. President, uh, Mr. President Osmick, uh, uh, I, Senator Sinja, move that Senate File 2420 be withdrawn from the Committee on Energy and Utilities, Finance and Policy and uh, be re referred to the uh, Committee on Environment and Natural Resources. Policy and Legacy Finance. Mr. President, this uh, regards a, uh, a, a, a bill that I'm authoring uh, relative to uh, uh, electric uh, engines on boats. And Senator Senjum, the uh, bill you're, you're having re-referred, that is with the, uh, with the permission of both of the chairs of the, uh, of the committees? I beg your pardon? Uh, both of the chairs are okay with the re-referral? Yes, yes, yes. To the motion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Yeah. Those opposed, motion carries. Senator Senjum. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, uh, I move that Senate File 2422 be, we be withdrawn from the CUNY and uh, State Government uh, Finance and Policy and Elections and be referred to the Environmental Natural Resources Policy, Legacy and Finance. And this likewise relates to uh, boats. And Senator Senjum, this is your bill, and you have permission for yes. both of the chairs. To the motion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Senate resolutions 88 through 93 will be referred to the Committee on Rules and Administration. Remaining under, remaining under motions and resolutions, Senator Miller. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that House File 1203 be withdrawn from the Committee on Labor and Industry Policy, given a second reading, and placed on general orders. To the motion, Senator Miller. Uh, members, this is the bill for presumptive uh, workers' compensation. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Senator Miller. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that an urgency be declared within the... Senator Miller, just a second. The Secretary will give the, the bill its second reading. House file number 1203. Senator Miller. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that an urgency be declared within the meaning of Article 4, Section 19 of the Constitution of Minnesota with respect to House file number 1203 and that the rules of the Senate be so far suspended as to give House File Number 1203 now on general or orders its third reading and place it on its final passage. To the motion. Seeing no discussion, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Senator Howe. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move the A1 amendment. Senator Howe moves the A1 amendment. Secretary will report the amendment. The Secretary will report the amendment. Senator Howe moves to amend House File Number 1203 as follows. Delete everything after the enacting clause and insert. This is the A1 amendment. Senator Howe. Thank you, Mr. President. Members, this is A1 amendment is a product through which we worked with the uh, Work Comp Advisory Council, the WCAC. Uh, it has their full blessing. Uh, what this amendment does, it has three articles. The first two articles are technical cleanup language, and the third article is the main part of the legislation and contains the COVID-19 presumption provisions. 
This amendment provides the, for those employees that contract COVID on or after the day of enactment of this bill. And it continues and sunsets on January 13, 2023. It also provides that those employees that contracted COVID between January 1, 2022 and the day previous to the enactment of this provision are still covered by work comp but not provided the presumption. I would have liked to have seen this legislation be retroactive to cover everyone, uh, but there was legal opinion by the Commerce Department that that would have been illegal. And so to not have delayed this important legislation through arguments whether it was legal or not, we decided that with the WCAC to continue with this legislation as it stands to cover those employees as quickly as possible and provide this presumption. So what the extension into January 13 provides is that if we, if we do need to continue this presumption because if COVID doesn't go away, the next legislature will be able to address that at that time and possibly extend it without having the gap that we had this year. We hope that that's not, we all hope that COVID is over by then and we don't need that presumption, but at least that it gives us the opportunity so we don't have a gap in that presumption like we do this time. I hope, I ask for your support and that is the meat of the amendment and the bill. Discussion to the A1 amendment. Senator Isaacson. Well, thank you, Mr. President. Congratulations. I haven't said that to you yet. Uh, I am uh, on the uh, Workers' Council, uh, Advisory Council, Workers' Compensation Advisory Council, and uh, what I really like about the council is that we try to use that as a way to get common sense things across, and it protects groups at the same time. Unfortunately, I think it also can uh, fall a little short at times, too, and I guess that's part of the art of compromise. <clears throat> I'm glad we came to an agreement. It's essential. We have to get this frontline employee business done uh, as fast as possible. We cannot allow this to go one more day every day as another day people fall into that gap period, and that is just not acceptable. We have to get people covered as soon as possible, and I commend Senator Hall and his colleagues across the aisle, across the, the street in, in getting that part done and offering this amendment. The problem we have is that uh, there is a donut hole created by this uh, through no fault of their own relating to the folks that aren't going to be covered in that gap in the month of January. So people that were covered up to December 31st aren't covered and then will become covered again, but we're leaving around 3,000 people not covered without the presumption. And that puts them at risk. And when I say 3,000 people, what I'm really talking about are firefighters, nurses, paramedics, and police officers. And that is where my biggest concern is. <clears throat> the problem I have with the way this process works is that we had a bunch of businesses from the chamber say no to covering benefits for public sector employees. Let's be clear about that, right? It's not representative, not representative in that way. And so a bunch of businesses from the chamber decided they didn't want to do this in the WCAC, and it causes them to be able to say no in the committee, which then causes this benefit doesn't get extended to people who don't work for them, but also work for the public employees, or work for the, work for the state as public employees. <clears throat> that being said, I had to think long and hard about whether or not we would do an amendment to really talk about that and bring that to light. Uh, however, I'm just going to uh, take a second here. Would Senator Rarick yield to a question? Senator Rarick, will you yield to a question? Oh, sorry, wrong side. Senator Rarick re will yield. Senator Isaacson. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Senator Rarick, uh, I, I know we've talked about this, and you are also acutely aware of this donut hole, this gap we're creating. Uh, would you commit to hearing a bill that would talk about and explore the ways we might be able to fill that gap and make people whole so we're not going to leave them hanging just because the legislature didn't get its dates right a year ago? Is that something? And, that, and that's no one's fault in particular, just that that's the way it worked out. Would you be willing to hear that bill? Senator Rarick? 
Uh, thank you, Mr. President and Senator Isaacson. Uh, yes, we would definitely uh, get that on the agenda. Uh, we have. We had left our first uh, meeting date of next Wednesday available to hear the work comp bill uh, because we're not hearing that um, if this if that legislation would be dropped and ready, uh, we could get that on the agenda for this coming Wednesday. That's wonderful. I, I think that that's really what we Senator need to Rising, hear. Sir. Thank. Oh, Mr. Chair, Pre President. Excuse me. I think that's what the people of Minnesota needed to hear, was they need to know that we recognize that there's a mistake through no fault of their own that allows us to provide the coverage we need to take care of those folks, which is our responsibility. And I appreciate uh, my friend Senator Warrick's willingness to hear that bill. Uh, so thank you for your time. Senator Utke. Thank you, Mr. President. And with the conversations that are being had, I just want to add some uh, clarity to this. No one lost out on benefits. There is no donut hole in coverage. The, from January 1st through the date of enactment, it did change the presumption only. The worker had, has the same coverage through this, these, uh, this month of January and these few days of February as they had the previous year. It's only the presumption. So I just want to make that clear that there are no benefits not being paid, just that the worker had to initiate the claims. The presumption just streamlines the process, so that's what we're dealing with with the presumption. So I just wanted to add that. Thank you, Mr. President. To that comment, Senator Isaacson. Would Senator Aki yield to a question? Senator Aki will yield. Senator Isaacson. Senator Aki, to your knowledge, people that are on presumption who make the claim versus people that are not, is there a difference in the rate in which they're accepted or denied? Senator Aki. Thank you, Mr. President. Could I ask for a repeat? I didn't you catch bet. it all. Sorry, Senator, yeah. Senator Isaacson. A little too much espresso in here. Sorry about that. When talking about people who are under the presumption versus not, when they file a claim, do you know if the denial rate is the same? Senator Rutke. Thank you, Mr. President. And I, I, what I heard is, is the denial rate the same? Well. It's, that is not really what, it, it could be or it could be different. And the reason I say could is the employer can challenge the claim. The burden goes back on the employer with the presumption. Um, as it has been the last, uh, what, 33, 34 days, the employee is bringing it forward like we always have with work comp. So whether there's denials or not, uh, to me, that's outside the conversation of the presumption. The presumption streamlines it. I don't have the data on denials with me or, or know what they would even be. Senator Isaacson. Well, Mr. President, I do. And I can tell you that uh, folks that did not qualify with the presumption were denied 72% of the time. And the reality is, is that denial, uh, the presumption is entirely about that. It's entirely about making sure that our people are covered. And so to say there isn't a donut hole is a bit disingenuous when we know, we know the past stats are very clear about this. If you don't have the presumption, your denial rate goes way up. And if it goes way up, these people are left uncovered when they would have been covered had we had the foresight to extend this long ago. So there is indeed a donut hole created there. And I think it's really important that people recognize that. Thank you. Senator Clausen. Thank you, Mr. President. I have a, a question uh, for either Senator Rarick or Senator Howe, and that is, is the unemployment insurance dollar the last dollar in? In other words, many of these groups that we're talking about have in their contract sick leave days. So must a person use all their sick leave days before they qualify, or do they automatically qualify the day that they are no longer able to work? I'm looking to see who wants it. Senator Howe will yield. Senator Howe to that question. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'm not sure where that goes in because you're talking about unemployment, uh, and this is workers' comp, and uh, I'm not a expert on workers' comp by any stretch of the imagination, but I, I'm trying to correlate the two. I don't know how that works, if they've got to use up their sick leave before they get workers' comp. Uh, I don't know, if, and this bill doesn't address that, 
this bill, all it does is it reenacts the uh, presumption and carries that forward. So I don't think anything previous to that would change. Senator Clausen, Senator Rarick is also willing to answer. Senator Rarick. Uh, thank you, Mr. President and Senator Clausen. Uh, it is my understanding that uh, work comp would uh, be in, taken up first. You would not be required to use uh, any sick time, uh, but we can follow up on that and uh, make sure with you. And then if we have a hearing on the, the Isaacson bill, um, we can bring that up there as well and discuss that more. Senator Clausen. Thank you uh, for those responses. Just one other comment. When, when I look at the criteria, when I look at the groups, and I look at the impact that they have had during COVID to our society, I'm very disappointed that we don't have teachers identified in the bill. Thank you. Further discussion to the A1 amendment. Senator McEwen. Thank you very much, um, Mr. President. I just have um, a couple of, of comments um, in reaction to some of the things that have been discussed. Um, I, I would not characterize this as streamlining. So the, the presumption is, is critically important for litigants in a workers' compensation case. If what we've had for some time that has been worked very, very well is to have this presumption where the burden, as has been stated, is on the employer to prove that the COVID wasn't contracted at work. It's presumed that it was contracted at work for this set of employees. We've had thousands and thousands of employees who have benefited from this presumption. Our concern is and let me just state for the record that we are very glad that an agreement has been reached with the Workers' Compensation Advisory Council, and we're happy to see that through. But we remain very, very concerned that we are going to have a month's and a couple of days' worth of workers who now will bear the burden of having to prove that they contracted COVID at work. The workers that contract COVID before that date will not have that burden. The workers who contract COVID after that date will not have that burden. It's just this group of workers who will bear that burden of having to prove that up. So that is a problem. It really is. And I thank um, my colleague, Senator Rarick, for your willingness to um, hear a bill that we will be bringing um, very soon to enact retroactivity. And I also, to that point, just want to make a record to state that while there is an argument that the re retroactivity is not constitutional, that is a debate that can be had in our courts. And in fact, there is a lot of precedent that tells us that the legislature has the right and the authority to enact retroactive legislation. We do this as a legislature. We did it to address clergy sex abuse. Uh, the courts have recognized in medical malpractice cases um, the retroactivity, and there's a case, Goldman versus Northland Physicians, that spells out in detail how the courts recognize the legislature's proper use of enacting retroactive legislation. Car crash, car crash cases, workers' compensation rehabilitative, re rehabilitation parameters. Um, so, so we can enact retroactive legislation, and this is a problem. It's a, it's a real problem that we have this month period where we're burdening this group of workers who are contracting COVID in one of the highest COVID rates of the pandemic. And I know that uh, in, in this body even, we might have mixed feelings about that. Obviously, we do, um, because we have um, half of our, a little over half of our body who is not even masking in the midst of part of the worst part of our pandemic. Um, but we are in one of the worst parts of our pandemic. We've had the National Guard have to relieve staff at hospitals. This is a problem. So we're going to take care of this month, and, and I thank my colleagues for recognizing that we can fix this, and we will. 
Senator Howe. Thank you, Mr. President. And I think uh, some of this question of retroactivity, we would have loved to have done it. I would have loved to have pushed it. I did push it. But when the Commerce Department's legal folks say that it is not legal for us to go retroactive, uh, you know, talk, take it up with the administration because that's the folks that uh, kind of squash that retroactivity piece because we didn't want to have the fight and extend this on. But members, I, I appreciate your willingness to, to put this through. I think it's imperative that we get it done for uh, our frontline workers. So thank you very much. Ask for your support. Seeing no further discussion, all in favor of the A-1 amendment signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, motion carries. To the Senate House File 1203 as amended, any further discussion? Seeing none, the Secretary will give Senate, uh, House File 20, 1203 its third reading. House File number 1203, a bill for neck relating to workers' compensation. Third reading. Any further discussion? Senator Lopez Franzen. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, members, for expediting this important bill. Uh, of course, it's not perfect, and we certainly want to see retroactivity, so I, I appreciate Senator Rarick's indulging our request to move a, a complete bill to make sure that all workers um, have. Uh, the opportunity to make their claims heard and workers' compensation in this pandemic. And we are uh, standing here with workers, making sure that they are provided the support that they have earned and, and need for our first responders, for our law enforcement, for our nurses. And of course, we want to extend it to others like teachers. And I think we should have a, a bigger debate because this was a bill that was uh, uh, agreed to in the beginning of the pandemic and as of course all of us have learned that the pandemic has evolved and that we should also evolve and adapt with it. So members, I encourage a green vote, but I want to send a message to our labor and our workers that we are with you, that we will fight for you and that we will do all of our, all we can in this legislative session to support your claims and support you during this difficult time. Thank you members and I encourage a green vote. Seeing no further discussion, the secretary will take the roll on the bill as amended. I call on Senator Friends to report the members voting under Rule 40.7. Senator Friends. Thank you, Mr. President. I report that Senator Carlson votes aye. Carlson votes aye. Senator Dibble votes aye. Dibble votes aye. Senator Diedzik votes aye. Diedzik votes aye. Senator Eaton votes aye. Eaton votes aye. Senator Eakin votes aye. Eakin votes aye. Senator Kent votes aye. Kent votes aye. Senator Latz votes aye. Latz votes aye. Senator Newton votes aye. Newton votes aye. Senator Port votes aye. Port votes aye. Senator Putnam votes aye. Putnam votes aye. Senator Torres Ray votes aye. Torres Ray votes aye. And Senator Wickland votes aye. Wickland votes Thank aye. Thank you. I call on Senator Jasinski to report members 
voting under section uh, rule 40.7. Senator Jasinski. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Senator Thomasoni votes aye. Thomasoni votes aye. Senator Jasinski. The Secretary will close the roll. There being 66 ayes and no nays, the bill, uh, the bill is passed as title agreed to. We move to the 13th order of business, announcements of Senate interest. Without objection, the following senators will be excused from today's Senate session. Senator Bach. Further discussion? Announcements. Senator Lopez Franzen. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I have a question for Senator Miller, if he would yield. Senator Miller will yield. Senator Lopez Franzen. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Miller, I, I see that per our rules, uh, the commissioners were placed on the confirmation calendar um, with our agenda. Do you plan to send any of them back to committee? I just want to know the intent of, of doing that. We normally go through that committee process and would like to know if we're going to continue to uh, affirm that committee process uh, for these commissioners. Senator Miller. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Senator uh, Lopez Franzen, all the commissioners right now are on the uh, calendar. Uh, we may or may not pull them back to uh, committee. Senator Lopez Franzen. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Miller, I, I would encourage that we continue to follow our committee process. We have a robust way to engage, to listen from our commissioners before we vote on them on the Senate floor. It's been custom and tradition, so I would really highly encourage that we follow that. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Miller. Thank you, Mr. President and members. I want to take a few moments to recognize the My District, My Minnesota project, which we have seen come to life in the Senate building. A few months ago, this was started by the Secretary of the Senate's office to work with each member and their school districts to get artwork from across Minnesota on display in the Minnesota Senate building. Thanks largely to the hard work of Diane Youngbauer, the Assistant Director of Senate Information, we received roughly 2,000 entries from Minnesota's school districts. One selection per Senate district was chosen to hang in the hallways of the Minnesota Senate building. Thank you, Diane, for your hard work and your efforts on this initiative. It was a huge undertaking, and I know I'm not the only senator who enjoys seeing the students' art in our building. I also want to give a quick shout out to Aidan Nolan and the students of Winona Senior High School who participated in my, my district, my Minnesota. Aidan's photography was selected, and I want to thank him for letting us have a little bit of Winona represented here at the Capitol in St. Paul. Senator Jasinski. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Members, I just wanted to announce that uh, this weekend, uh, Minnesota Rendezvous is having an event in northern Minnesota in Brainerd at uh, Craigens Resort. Uh, this is highlighting the importance of snowmobiling in Minnesota, uh, what it does for tourism in our state, and uh, I want to thank uh, everybody involved that goes along, a bipartisan group of uh, legislators uh, participate in that. It's a great event to get to know each other outside the walls of this capital. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Johnson. Mr. President, I'd like to correct Senator Jasinski that's central Minnesota, not northern Minnesota. <laughs> Senator Jasinski, you need to check your regionality, please. Senator Weger. Thank you, Mr. President. Members, as we're acknowledging the upcoming events in White Bear Lake at Ramsey County Beach on Saturday, February 5, there's going to be uh, golf using a tennis ball. And it'll be from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. It's a fundraiser for the White Bear Lake Food Shelf. 
Further announcements? Senator Miller. Mr. President, I move that the Senate do now adjourn until Monday, February 7th at 11 a.m. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Senate is adjourned.